to the Pat Mayo Experience Week 9 Waiver Wire Pickup Rankings Injury Recap. We're going to get a power poll on the go. Again, like I keep saying, once we get into our new studio, we're going to do a big giveaway. So in the comment section, don't be afraid to give a like for one thing. you got to go do that for me. But then leave your DraftKings name and your top five teams in the power poll. Did it change from Week 8? Probably not, because... All the favorites won, and that's what happened. So it's me. We're down in Boston coming off the live Sunday show that we did at Gillette Stadium. Thanks for everyone that came out. Thanks for everyone that left a comment. Watch. It was awesome. We had a great time. Me and Tim and August. Tim and August. That is not my name. I heard it was. You, you know you didn't. I Nobody. Did. People showed up. No. When they said they wanted to get a picture with you, what did the guy call you? I don't remember. When it was tweeted out, what was on a... I don't remember. You don't remember? No. In the description of the video, what did it say? I can't recall. Oh, so you just have a bad memory then. Yeah. Is this why you think this is not your name? Because you suffer from amnesia? <laughs> So yes is the answer to that. <laughs> All right, we'll get into the power poll a little bit later on. Let's go through the waiver wire pickup rankings for running back. Nothing changes for me. Merwin Mack stays number one. He finally is playing more snaps than Frank Gore right now, although Gore stupidly got involved in the receiving game, which was supposed to be Mack's job from last week. Doesn't matter. Mack scored the touchdown. Mack looked better than Frank Gore because Frank Gore had his ox. Well, the last part of that sentence is untrue. But Merwin Mack has more 10-plus rushing attempts this season than Frank Gore does in the past two years. Marlon Mack is a better player. Frank Gore's not terrible. He just, if they gave him more opportunities, he'd be really good. Oh, but yes. I mean, he, had, he has not gotten his fair shake. He, he's an okay player. He's awful. But Mack is certainly the better player, and you're right to have him where you do. All right, so you pick up Marlon Mack. He's still available in 70% of leagues on ESPN, which I thought was kind of crazy. Because he plays for the Colts, and people just, you know. Don't care. A lot of people All just say, people want is a running back. Yeah, you would think that. A lot of people say, oh, Colts are terrible. I don't want them, so. It's not a bad, that's not a bad train of logic. It'd be like picking up Browns. The Browns are terrible. Don't pick up them. There's really not an ownable Brown left in, the, in fantasy. Crowell and Duke. Maybe. Maybe Crowell. Duke's not ownable anymore. Duke's definitely ownable. Nah, he's awful. Have you looked at his numbers? Yeah, he's awful. He's basically a fringe top 15 nah, running back. he's awful. Oh, but he's bad. Frank Gore, he's the good one. No, Duke Gore, Johnson, he is the Frank bad Gore's one. Frank Gore's a Hall of Fame running back. That's great. Maybe you get your Hall of Fame point, your Hall of Fame bonus once he gets in. You I, I don't even know if he's going to get into the Hall of Fame. Should he? Yeah, he's got Why, because he lasted a long time? Well, but that's something in football. That actually is something. Sure, but he's been like, you know, the eighth best running back in the league for most of his career. Yeah. And then... I like that. Shouldn't the Hall of Fame be to reward the best players? If T.O. can't get into the Hall of Fame, Frank Gore's not getting in the Hall of Fame. Of course, Terrell Owens is a much better player. Yes, but he's not in. So how can we put Frank Gore in? In time. In time. I don't know about that. Your buddy, Curtis Martin, at least he was good. Yeah, well, he was probably the most underrated running back in the last 25 Apparently years. not. Frank Gore is, because you think he's a Hall of Famer. I, I, I'm convinced of that fact. All right. I'd rather put in LaShawn McCoy. Okay, sure. Shady's about to get to 10,000 yards. At least he's been the best running back Gore's in the over 10,000 yards? Because he's played 17 years. Okay, fine. You can hate on him all you want. So be it. All right, so Marlon Mack's number one. <laughs> Alex Collins is number two. Uh, my only concern with uh, Alex Collins in this sense is that we've seen him kind of take this job before, and then all of a sudden, Buck Allen is the guy again. The one big thing that I noticed here, he played more snaps by one. He had more carries by one over Buck Allen. It's going to be kind of dicey because Baltimore's not going to be winning every game by 40 points. No, and... It also depends on the quarterback position, right? If Mallett's starting, there are going to be a lot more carries to go around. So that'll be Alex Collins. Exactly. If, if Flacco comes out and plays, then you'll see, I think, fewer uh, runs and far more passes. But the big thing was, Marlon Mack did not have a reception until Thursday night. And he had two. Yeah, no, fair enough. Which, which is good. He was playing more passing down, so that was very encouraging when it comes to it. Danny Woodhead's going to come back at some point, too, and uh, throw an entire wrench into the situation. Until he gets hurt six minutes later, so sure, I'm not too worried about Ter it. Terrence West might come back. Sure, sure. The, the whole point of him being number two is that his very shallow week. No, yep. one, no one got hurt at running back except Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson suffered a concussion, but he passed it, so he's able to come back. So okay, he's going to be fine. They're, go they're going on by next week anyway. I don't understand what you're thinking don't like against him. Duke Johnson. I don't like him. Because Crowell's a much better back. I like Crowell a lot. He's taking. But Crowell does not think. He scored a touchdown yesterday. Great. So he has two this year. Oh, well. He's excellent, though. you got you got to start him. He's very ownable with Frank Gore. You have quite the backfield on the go. <laughs> Whatever. All right. So Alex Collins, number two. Uh, then McFadden. We're going to know the Zeke news, hopefully by end of day Monday. That's when his court appeal is. Unless it doesn't change seven times between that Th and that. That's the whole thing. Like, it went from, it's funny, because I was talking about it with Pierce on Matchups Breakdown when he got suspended for the six games again. Right. And it was just like, well, there's no way this could be overturned now. They'd have to bring it to the Supreme Court, like, Six hours later, it's just like, oh, yeah, he's fine. He's, he's playing again. Yeah. 
who, the vagaries of the legal system are impossible for us to divine. <laughs> so, Darren McFadden I have at number three in case sure. Zeke ends up suspended for reals this time. Now, if he's not suspended, I'll update the column on DKPlaybook.com. I update it through uh, the Monday Nighter and then again Tuesday whenever injury news breaks or news breaks itself. And then he'd probably fall down the list a little. Yeah, bit. but you made the point about McFadden to me yesterday, and that's correct, that he hasn't been active in a game yet. So even if Zeke misses the game, well, we think McFadden will get the lion's share. There's no guarantee of that. We're not certain. I think there's a just as good a chance that he and Morris get an equal amount of carries because Morris has been playing, has gotten reps in games, and McFadden has it. And plus, McFadden is made out of porcelain. But, so. I, but, that, but I feel like that's the reason that they're not playing. And I agree with keep you. Like, it, keep him healthy in case Zeke misses time, then we can just shift him over. I agree with all of that. I'm just saying I'm a, a little apprehensive that he'll like be the bell cow back. I don't I, think that's the case. No, I, I think you're right, but... Even if he's not the bell cow back, if he's getting 65% of the snaps, then he's still worth it. Sure, out. I think that may be a bit heavy to start, but you're, you're right to say that. Because Alfred Morris is not going to be on the field for passing downs ever. No. So, but that's correct. Right. And I don't think that Alfred Morris is as good as Zeke. I also agree. Well, there, of course. Therefore, he, but I mean, that's a part of their whole identity. Like, even yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Give Zeke 33 carries. We don't need to throw the ball because we can just run every And eventually play. he will break one, yeah. Yeah, but I don't think that Alfred Morris is really that guy. No. I mean, he was never really that guy, but now... He had his moments in Washington in 2012, but... Sure, that's a long time ago. It, well, it, well, of course it is. I mean, maybe they can re-sign Chris John. Maybe they can get Frank Gore. Yeah, they can right. both run to the Hall of Fame together, get all some right. Isaiah Crowell, all cut right. all the good running back, right. cut Zeke, not as good as Isaiah Crowell or Frank Gore. Okay. Uh, then I go Matt Forte, Deion Lewis, DeAndre Washington, Andre Ellington, Wendell Smallwood. The Oakland situation is really interesting. Um, Washington ended up with 10 targets yesterday, too. So if you picked him up and started him in a spot, I thought Richard would be better. Me too, and then we said as much. Uh, Richard ended up being okay. He had five catches. He ended up with 60-plus. If you picked him up and played him, you probably weren't disappointed. No, not If you all. picked up Washington and played him, you were ecstatic. Ended up with the touchdown. Alo Waluigi came in, snaked one like I thought he would, because that's what the Raiders would do. He's like the, an insta Raider running back. But he's not, because he's done this before. Yes. It'd be like if Marcel Reese came back out of nowhere and started it getting catches. His turn. It, sometimes it used to be Reese's turn. <laughs> anyway, um, I have DeAndre Washington at six. Because Marshawn Lynch is obviously coming back this week, but has he? Marshawn Lynch hasn't been good. Nope. So is this like a three-headed? I, I don't know if it's going to be a three-headed backfield, but I think after yesterday's game, DeAndre Washington showed. Maybe he's done enough to eat into some of the overall production. So he's more of like a handcuff. Yeah, at this point, I think all the Raiders running backs are all eating each other, and they're all useless because of this. They are kind of useless. Like, they're hard to play. That's what I mean. I think the, the, uh, the three of them have sort of, like, consumed each other's viabilities. Uh, Arizona is in San Francisco this week. This is a good spot for Adrian Peterson because they might be favorites in this game, and they're playing a backup quarterback. But anytime they are not favorites in a game... <laughs> Which will be very, very infrequent. Exactly. That, that's, why, that's why Andre Ellington is still number seven in these <laughs> rankings. Because when they're down in games, he's going to be the one on the field. He was dealing with the quad injury. Sure. They have the bye week. He's back. He's going to be fine. He's their passing down back. And if they're passing, because they're down in games, AP's not going to be on the field. No. K -K he, he, I mean, he has probably better hands than, like, Jordan Howard. But AP got to have two byes this year, which is going to help him a little bit. Maybe he'll have a good game coming out of the bye again. But I, I mean, he, he's had one good game out of, what, seven? Yeah, but it came off a bye. So maybe he'll be enough. Maybe that, that he needs an extra week for his body to get ready. Maybe he has a good week this week and then never again again. I mean, you should have traded him after the first good week. Of course. But here we are. Uh, the other guys. Oh, Rex Burkhead, your buddy. I have Lewis at five, Burkhead at nine. And if I had to own Patriots running backs, the only one I would play every single week is James White because he's the only one who scores fantasy points every single week. So, And that's only in PPR leagues. In PPR leagues, he scored double-digit points every week but one. That's good. Yeah, no, sure. I mean, Burkhead has been hurt. He, he, he's been hurt, so... I think they want to get him more involved in the passing game, but since the Patriots are on by, I don't think I'd pick up any of the Patriots' backs this week. I mean, you just have James White, you keep him. I think Deion Lewis, because he's doing so much work on the ground, which is what we kind of expected Gillisley to do, yeah, and he's sure. just not doing anything. No, well, he was early in the season, but now he's not. But now he's not because he's been terrible. Yeah. So it would go White, Lewis, Burkhead, and then Gillisley. Gillisley's I, not even coming and scoring touchdowns anymore. I, I think I agree. And you kind of, like, if you own Burkhead, you can't really, I mean, you could play him in a pinch if you wanted to. Um, but White and Burkhead seem to have had their better games when there's a lot of pressure coming the other way. Correct. Quick passes. And we saw that yesterday. Yep. Like Brady didn't have time to stand in the pocket and throw the ball downfield. It was just dump, 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 dump. Yeah, that's so right. he did a good job of getting it out quickly, so it didn't really matter. Uh, CJ Pro sites will eventually be healthy, I think. One should hope. I mean, he's been hurt. He was hurt too much last year. He's hurt again this year. 
poor guy just can't stay healthy. That's all there is to it. Rawls played 41 of the snaps yeah. yesterday, but did nothing. Yeah, Rawls might not be on the team by this time next week. I mean, I'd rather have him on the team other than Eddie Lacy, like, who's even worse. He can't block. He can't protect. He, like, he looks useless out there. But so does Eddie Lacy. Yeah, but Eddie Lacy, I think, can at least stand in front of a, a pass rusher and block. Well, I mean... I it, don't think Rawls can do that. I don't know how long he can stand up with that weight on his legs. Well, he'd just get some diabetic socks and be able to... Maybe so. Improve, improve maybe the circulation. Maybe that will be what he ends up doing. But, like, Seahawks running backs are useless. Everyone Rawls would be the only one to roster. I still think McKissick roster. is the most talented back, but he's not getting the opportunities. Of so. course not. He's a backup to C.J. Prosite. I know, I know. I, but let's pick him up. He's better, no, no. Than, Duke, better not, than Duke Johnson. I'm not saying pick him up. I just I think it's a shame they're not using him effectively. Do you think he's the new Frank Gore? Hall of Famer? Well, no. Uh, backups I have in here. Wendell Smallwood gets... That game just had a weird flow to it. Yeah. Yesterday. It was close, and the next thing you know, you blinked, and it was 17 donuts. So, so Blunt ended up with his touchdown at the end of the game. Clement played a whole bunch. Smallwood basically didn't play at all after playing a bunch yeah. Monday night. So it's a really weird circumstance. I penciled him at number eight here, uh, just one spot ahead of Burkhead, who yeah. needs basically an injury in order to be trusted to play. But none of these guys are really playable. Mac, maybe Collins, McFadden if Zeke's out. Sure. Forte, because he's piling up all the catches now. He's basically taken Bilal Powell. They've swapped roles. Like yeah. Bilal Powell's now getting carries, but Forte's getting all the catches. You know, Dark One and a pinch, I suppose. Oh, good you, lord. You could play. I don't like him, but like he seems to keep emerging week after week doing something. But I mean, Gallman played more snaps last. I know, last and I think Gallman's better. But... Perkins going to be back this week. Right. He's, he's, Ver- he's no good. But he's going to play. Yeah. And you have to factor that in. Okay. It's just You just eat away from the bottom line of all of these guys, and they're just useless. Yeah. Giants running backs, useless. That's Ver- true. Vereen might be the only one that you could potentially spot start like a 16 team league in a PPR league because he might get some catches but but we don't know no because it's that crappy backfield receivers again nothing really much doing uh, Chris Hogan got hurt which could help Burkhead I guess how is Juju not owned in like 99 percent of leagues because he just got a starting job this week whatever but he looked good before that he should be the number one pickup I want him over Sterling Shepard I do not Sterling Shepard is now returning from injury Sterling Shepard is going to be the number one receiver in an offense yeah, but I, if the offense is so terrible I'd rather the number two receiver in Pittsburgh's offense the number one receiver you've in claimed that all year the Pittsburgh's offense is terrible but it's looked effective enough well it looks effective when Juju scoring 97 yard touchdowns wouldn't expect that every week well no wouldn't, wouldn't expect that Antonio Brown insane. to finish with five catches every week that, I think it's, and there's no guarantee that Martavis Bryant is just a healthy scratch ever again. He might be, but we don't know that he's going to be. I mean, I was so surprised to see him on the sidelines for last night's game in street clothes. I figured, just why would you bring him to Detroit considering the internal dynamics they have, but they brought him. So that was interesting. So, I still think Smith Schuster is great, and uh, I think he's a talent. I mean, he, you're, you're basically putting the number three receiving option in an offense behind the number one receiving option in an offense. Well, if you consider Bell the number two receiving option. I do. I okay. I do consider Bell. He's the number two receiver. Uh, so that, does, that doesn't mean anything in the, in the food Just, chain. I think the Giants are such trash that I would rather. I would rather have the targets. Uh, the guaranteed basic ten targets every single game. I mean, Schuster might have ten. He might have two. I okay. don't know. He's worth it for the upside because of that offense, but like... I think he's a better standard league pickup. Uh, but, I mean, you could almost make the case for Cooper Cup as well, who's getting all the red zone targets. Yeah, okay. And then you blame him for dropping touchdowns when there's no chance he can catch the ball because Jared Goff's so good. Jared Goff is really good. Oh, he, yeah. He did a, drop it. It was in his hands. He didn't drop it. It was not in his hands. He had to dive for the ball and hit his fingertips. Both hands. He should have caught it. Yeah, you're Steve. really quick to judge on this one, aren't Steve you? Steve Young, I saw said that, didn't he? Didn't Steve Young say that he should have caught it or something? I I don't know. You're the one I'm hearing said he got. I watched the play. I saw it and live, like, and it's like, wow, dropped. that was a terrible throw. It oh was, yeah, he should have caught it though. He did throw it too hard, but he also threw it too hard and too far out in but front of he him. Should have caught it. I'll blame him for it. You're gonna you, blame Cooper Cup, not, not Hall of Famer. Cut, Jared Goff. Cut Jared Goff some slack. He's playing good football. Why do I need to cut him slack? You have Robbie Anderson at four. Oh, why wouldn't I have Robbie Anderson? I don't like him either. Double digit. I don't trust him. Double digit. Double-digit points I know. in five, three straight no, games. No, I know scoring this. touchdowns. He is the only big play threat they have in that offense. I mean, Curse and ASJ, are, they're short yardage guys. That's true. Robbie Anderson has speed. They use him downfield. The Jets have started to suck again, so they're back in games. They have to throw. Well, they're losing games with playing good in games that they're losing, which is actually the worst. Great the moral victories. No, no. I, I mean, wish they would. Hall lo- of Fame team, the New York if Jets. If they're going to lose. Better I, than the Patriots. If they were going to lose. Put them I, in the Hall of Fame. If they were going to lose, I wish they would be lose like 30 points because it's frustrating now the last three weeks to get leads against teams and give those leads away. This team could easily be 6-2, and two, but it's 3-5. and 6-2. Yeah. Easily. Okay. It could e- easily be. It, easily be. It, except, for they, except for they suck, so they can't mm, be 6-2. Yeah. Okay, two. that's fine. If, if you were a six and two team, you wouldn't blow every game at the end. Well, the Bills are a five and two team. They keep <sighs> squeezing out wins they don't deserve. We'll so. talk. We'll talk about the Bills when we get to this power pull. It's, oh, I can't even fathom what the Bills are doing right now. 
I, I haven't seen, I'm trying to think of the last time like this sort of team existed. That doesn't really do anything besides generate lucky turnovers. Well, this is a throwback. Do you remember when Jim Miller started for the Bears and they were like 13-3, like, like 2002, something like that? That team was the one of the worst teams I ever saw. And they did that. But then the Bears team that went to the Super Bowl was a terrible team offense. Yeah, but they actually had a legit lights out defense. That's true. And created a bunch of turnovers and had the best that special Tennessee teams. team with Terry, yeah, with Kerry Collins. I mean, that went like to 13 and 3 back in 2008 or 9. There was a Chiefs team that like it was like plus 24 in turnovers one year. Yeah, that may be right. And then they got wiped out in the playoffs. Playoffs, yeah. I think that was like 2011. I, I, I just don't know how the Bills are sustaining them. I mean, the running game is good. Tyrod's not turning the ball over, but every single drive, it's like, oh, the helmet hit the ball. Oh, here we go. Boom, touchdown. Their team is the equivalent of a man reaching into a hat and pulling out a rabbit over and over <laughs> again. <laughs> All right, so Robbie Anderson's number four. So Shepard, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, Cooper Cup, Robbie Anderson, then Ted Ginn, who just keeps yeah, doing sure. stuff. Every, they, sure. Listen, it's not bad to have a piece. Of the Saints offense? A useful piece. Unless it's Mark Ingram who fumbles the ball every single useless. time he touches the ball. Useless. Um, then Jamison Crowder finally shows up. Josh yep. Doxson played a career high in snaps and finally got a touchdown. That was nice. Yeah. Uh, but that's all he did. Yeah. That's not good news. Yeah. I like P. Rich where you have him at nine. I, I still like him more than Doxson. Yeah, but... Richardson's going to be what he did yesterday, or he's going to be zero points. I know, but... Doxson's someone you can see emerging, passing Pryor, and playing all the time and becoming a part of that offense. Well, yeah, if he has two legs, he'll pass Pryor, because Pryor's no good. You just really don't like Terrell Pryor, I said at the start of the year he's no good. He's proven me correct. At least one of the few things I got right is that Terrell Pryor is an unownable player. See, you should have bet on that. And you didn't say at the beginning of the year he was unownable. I said he was not good. I didn't want him on any of my teams, and I, I made that claim. But you wanted, you wanted Hall of Famer Julius Thomas on your team. Yeah, and I was wrong about that. You're lucky Austin Hooper dropped the second touchdown. Yeah, I've already. There's no way I can win that bet now. It's just a matter of time for me to. Didn't pay me out. No, I, I won't pay, do that. Pay, pay out my 10 to 1 I and be on your way. I won't do Don't that. Don't try to use your fucking reverse Ander curse on I'm me. I'm just That's... going to morally accept the loss, and then when I physically lose, I, I'll I, I think me. you should pay me out right now, and then we can make a new bet no. that will Julius Thomas surpass the amount of points Austin Hooper has at this <laughs> moment for the rest of the season. No more points for Austin Hooper. <laughs> Julius Thomas can pass him, though. That was my suggestion. Yeah, but you have to pay me out on my bet first. You have to concede your bet to me, pay me out. I'll morally we, concede it, but not actually then we had, concede it. Why? Then we're not making a new bet. All right, so fine. I'll give you 9 to 1 to no. pay me out. <laughs> I don't you want can, it. I can live cash out at 9 to 1. I don't want it. All right. Uh, the other guys, I don't know what to make of uh, the Drew Stanton led Cardinals. Nobody does. Other than keep. I mean, Fitz is going to keep being amazing, but he's out. He, you can't pick him up. There's no one else on the Cardinals offense I want. I, I feel like someone will. I mean, I don't mind Ellington, but uh, he's okay. John Brown? Eh, who knows? That's, that's the thing. That's it, it, who knows? Okay, but if you're trying to be proactive and pick people up. Yeah, but this isn't being proactive. It's just chucking a dart, which is all so, I But sometimes doing. you check some darts. If you got room, like, did, out of all of the receivers in Arizona, is there one that interests you? Of the available ones? It would be John Brown for me. I guess. I don't disagree. Just I don't like any of the receivers outside of Fitzgerald. Okay. So. But you like Paul Richardson? Yep. Yeah, Richardson's just doing stuff. Sometimes he does he, stuff. I don't like that he makes every catch he, uh, it more difficult than it needs to be, but I just like the kid a lot. Um, Bill's receivers? Jordan Matthews, I guess? Sure. Or any of them? I still think Deontay Thompson's really good, but... They didn't use him yesterday. They I, I thought him. they would. I, I used him in a bunch of lineups. Didn't work out. Kenny Stills, now that Matt Moore's not starting anymore... Put him back on the bench. Sure. He had a rapport with Matt Moore. Yeah. He's like the only guy who did anything. Uh, Alan Hearns, Marquise Lee, they're there. Yeah, Eric Decker looked like he was developing a little bit last week. You mean when he had no catches? Didn't he have one or two catches? Are you sure? Zero. Maybe it was called back on a penalty or something. He, looked great. he looked great, though. I thought I saw him catch a couple of passes in that Browns game. Either way, I, I still I've think I've seen he's... more of him on his terrible reality show this season. I, I still, on the I still like Eric Decker, so... Let's say he hadn't played for the Jets. Would he be a Hall of Famer or still be really good in his zero catch performance? I liked him when he was in Denver too. I was fired up when the Jets got him because I, I thought he was a good receiver. He is. He was a good receiver. He blew out his knee, and now he's on an offense that spreads the ball around. Yeah. What do you want him to do? Uh, Corey Davis might be back this week for the Titans too. Yeah, I think, and that, of course, I would be, be nothing but eating into everybody else's value in Tennessee. Yeah, so the only guys to really own in the receiving game, Walker, who we'll get to in a second here, he's still banged up, and Rashard Matthews. Yeah. So, so Robbie Anderson, yeah. Double-digit fantasy days the last three weeks, and at least nine points in five of his last six games. Like, that's that's real. I know it is real, but I still don't, I still don't trust the And I watched I mean, I watch these games, <laughs> and I watch him play, and I don't know how he's doing some of the stuff he's doing. Well, he's little, he's sneaky, and he's fast. Yeah. What more do you want from him? Maybe when Christian comes in in a couple of weeks. We'll see oh, my God. Do you really want the hack in there? I'm ready for it. 
the season's over now, so I'm ready for... Why don't you just forfeit every game instead of playing him? That would Wouldn't that be better? They should see what they've got. Plus, they, I think they know plus, what they have. That's why he's not plus playing. Plus, if he's bad, I can get Todd Bowles fired, which is also something that I want. Hall, Hall of Fame coach Todd Bowles, along with Hall of Fame quarterback Jared Goff and Christian Hackenberg. I want Todd Bowles fired. And I hate to call for people uh, being fired. You call for it every single week. You call for Brian Kelly to be fired like 17 consecutive weeks. Now he's the greatest coach on earth. I also got criticized yesterday when I called for Bill O'Brien to be fired on Twitter last night. Someone said for someone to doesn't like people getting fired. You sure do call for heads a lot. <laughs> so Chris Hogan, uh, after the Patriots game, are in a sling. They said, best case scenario, we're going to know more, but the Patriots go on by, so and the Patriots are terrible yeah. injury information anyway. It's all anyway. cloak and dagger. Uh, AC joint problem at best, was what I saw on Twitter this morning. Yeah, <laughs> unless it's an AC Slater joint, it's not, it's not a good thing. Well, I mean... Do you even know who that is? Yes, of course I do. Who is it? From Saved by the Bell. Okay. I'm just, just, Thanks. Just seeing. I, I'm shocked, to tell you the truth. I'm up on contemporary culture. Yes, I mean, nothing like 1989 culture. That would be the peak of your contemporary. <laughs> anyway, AC joint, that's what Golden Tate was going through. He came back much earlier than expected. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know if Hogan's going to be back coming off the bye. We're probably not going to know until, like, day of. Exactly. Because that's what the Patriots do. Uh, it opens the door for Philip Dorsett to get back on the field, or potentially Rex Burkhead to go into the slot like we saw earlier in the season when Hogan and Dorsett that's, and Amadola were all banged that's up. That's what I would expect to happen, not Dorsett. I mean, Dorsett will be back probably yeah, back on the field. He is the, res- sure. the next receiver in line. I think Burkhead would be the beneficiary of that. Potentially. We'll see. We don't know. So we'll see the more and more it goes with Hogan. And we'll get some more news. Cole Beasley forced out of action with a concussion. And then Switzer came in. Good lord. Yeah, yeah. Cole Beasley was pretty unownable outside of one game anyway, so you probably don't want the poor man's Cole Beasley. No, you don't. Uh, Kenny Galladay, hurt again, didn't play. The guy never plays. No. So leaving the door open for your guy, TJ Jones. TJ Jones is really good. Well, unfortunately, he's going to be back on the bench when Galladay eventually comes back. But he played well last night, and I think that I would like to see the Lions use TJ Jones. Well, they him. won't. And he's also a use, weapon in the special teams. They're going team. to use Galladay over TJ Jones once Galladay comes back. Well, I'm hoping TJ can Bad news him. for Hall of Famer TJ Jones. He's a good player. Oh, yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. That's what I you did. said. Your words. All right. Uh, like I said, Corey Davis is going to be back. What's it, 14 team league. You can pick him up. Sure, he's a. He, because he's a high powered rookie, he's worth a stash. It is, but like. Because he could hit. And Tennessee is starving for offense. So if he didn't get him going. He got going week one. And then they probably should have just sat him out then because then he reactivated his hamstring, yeah. no, which he was true. dealing with anyway. Yeah, no, that's that's all true. Uh, yeah, and like I wrote in the column, I uh, wouldn't count on a 97-yard touchdown. Juju Smith-Schuster every week. Probably not Probably not sustainable. Although this Will Fuller thing is becoming sustainable. It's not sustainable. A- every every time happening. they throw to him, it's a touchdown, so why wouldn't you throw to him every time? <laughs> I don't understand what Houston is doing. They should be using him a lot more. I think that's sort of like the, the thing with him, though. If you use him more, you make him look bad because he can't really He does get... have a case of the drops. He's always so so you problem. use him in, like, you just use Hopkins, 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 Hopkins. The team forgets about Will Fuller, then he's just open downfield. That, I mean, that, that, that is, that's their game plan. That is the offense. Uh, tight ends. We had some tight end injuries. This is the one spot where people got kind of banged up. Your main man, number one tight end. If you go back and watch the Sunday morning show, your number one tight end, Jordan Reed who I mentioned had a better chance of leaving the game with an injury than being the number one tight end or even scoring a touchdown, left the game with the hamstring yeah, injury. He has an operation board at this point. He's had like 28 concussions. He was doing with rib and chest injuries earlier. Now he's a hamstring injury. So you're saying he has water on the knee as well? Potentially. I don't know. Give him a red nose. and He's got his after football career already planned out. Poor Jordan Reed. But I, I don't know if he's going to play next week. Somehow he'll end up on the field and people will be like, oh, Start Jordan Reed, then you'll start him, then he'll be out of the game. Yeah, if he's starting, I would still recommend him. No, no, I don't start Jordan. You could basically drop Jordan Reed. I can't help it. He's he so good. He's a headache he to is. have on your team. Because you play him, he does nothing. And you're like, Jordan Reed's really good, though. I'm going to hold on to this guy. Maybe if you just cut him, it's better. I can't quit Jordan Reed. Why? I just think he's good. What, what, what less does he need to do? When he, when he doesn't get hurt, he's really talented. Is he, though? He's had one good game all year. One. Yeah, but I like him, whatever. But Hall, him, Hall of Famer, Jordan Reed? Makes Vernon Davis somebody I'm also interested in. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, Jack Doyle is still available in like 70% of leagues. Uh, it's now 25 catches for him over the past three games. I, wouldn't look, I would expect more of like the, the 6 for 50 sure. rather than the 12 for 100 and whatever in a touchdown. But he, they're really hurting for receiving options. Brissett has a connection with him now. Luck's probably not coming back. Why would he? No, there's no reason to. The they, season's over. And they might trade T.Y. Hilton. That's possible. He wants more, out of there anyway. Leaving more. Does anyone want T.Y. Hilton? 
Oh, I think teams would line up to get T.Y. Hilton, yes. It's, it's, he's pretty expensive. He is expensive, but there are teams that are going for the Super Bowl this year who would take him in a heartbeat. Who do you think would want him? The Jets? No. no the potentially 6-2 and two Jets? If I were the Buffalo Bills, I'd pay heaven uh, and earth for him. Uh, if I were the, the Philadelphia The Bills Eagles, are actively trading away all I know, high-priced players. But they just got this cap money saved with Darius. They could use I, it. I believe some of the dead money still falls on well, them. Well, some of it does, but I'm just saying that Bills are a team that could theoretically make a push. Why not, not roll the dice or something? I mean, they should just get another lucky defender. Or if I were, let's say, God forbid, Jacksonville. You know, like, I don't think a team would ever trade in division, but, like, they, they're they starving for wide receiver uh, well, talent. Why, why would they care if they're out of it? Well, because they're technically not, unfortunately. But they are. I mean, they're no good, but... Yeah, unless luck comes back, which he's not, then they're done. Yeah. No, I'm talking about Jacksonville, a team that would trade for him. Yeah, but Indianapolis is done, so what do they care? Well, just because he, uh, he's under contract for a couple more years, right? You don't want to. Yeah, give... you don't think Jacksonville is good, so what's the difference? I don't, but I would. I don't like trading people in division. Either. Why? Why is it Matt? I don't get what. Because you have to keep facing them over and over again. I just don't like that. It's too many revenge games. I've for had your too liking? many former Jets who've come, become Patriots who have haunted me over and over again. I so without like without those former Jets, the Patriots would be no good. No, but it helps. Does it? And it's like former Dolphins have come and played for the Patriots and been great, and it's just or Bills. It just annoys me. Not Mike Gillisley. Not Mike Gillisley. So the tight end rankings go, Greg Olson is eligible to practice again. He's at, eligible to be back on the field week 10. He's dealing with the broken foot, so there's no guarantee that he's going to be ready in time. But he's now available in 65% of leagues. Sure. If I didn't have a tight end, let's say I had someone crappy like Jordan Reed, just drop Jordan Reed, pick up Greg Olson, and then pick up someone else to stream in the meantime. And then when Greg Olson comes back, you have potentially a top three tight end. I would want to have Olson on my team, yes. If I could get him, I'd, I wouldn't spend a ton of money on him because it's still... You don't need to. I mean, knows, listen, but if you needed to, he'd still be out. That's true. He wouldn't just be available. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So he'd be my number one ad if you're looking long-term and you need the help. Charles Clay uh, could return, probably not this week, but the week after the Bills having a mini-buy after playing on Thursday night against the Jets. Uh, he's not going to be back against the Jets. No. But... He's the highest percentage of market share of any tight end in the league for his team's reception. Yeah, I believe it. Like, the other receivers can't catch. No. And Charles Clay just runs these 12-yard routes. Yeah. He's always just open. He's a better PPR play, but you know he's kind of like the, the six for 70 guy. Sure, which is incredibly that's really, valuable. It's very valuable tight very end. Valuable tight he's end. one of the few tight ends that can score points without scoring a touchdown. Correct. So it goes Olsen, Doyle, Clay, Vernon Davis. Listen, if Reed's going to be out, which we don't know yet, but... It, likely that he's going to be out. And Niles Paul, Maris? <laughs> he left the game with a concussion, too. Yeah. So they're down two tight ends. Vernon Davis is the last guy there. Who's Washington get this week? They're at Seattle. Seattle, not the best against tight ends. No, to say the least. And when Reed has been out, we've seen Vernon Davis be a usable part of the offense. Vernon Davis might be their best receiver. Yeah, he might be. I mean, I... The thing is, the only... I still think Chris Thompson is their best game. pass catcher. <laughs> so their, their best pass catcher is not a receiver. On no, it's, it's not. The only problem with Vernon Davis is with four guys down on the offensive line that he might be asked to block too much. Sure, I can and see that. And he's not going to be running as many routes. Maybe Trent Williams gets back next week. Maybe they do get a little bit healthier on the offensive line, and that's better news. Yeah, sure. But with Pryor sitting on the bench, Doxon making a catch a game... Chris Thompson and Vernon Davis might be the only options they have left along with Thompson. Yeah, no, that's a fair, that's a very fair point. And Vernon Davis is like their deep play guy. He, he certainly is. Yeah. Uh, Teller Croft, number five. Cincinnati, he's the out. He's the safety blanket for Andy Dalton. He needs a safety blanket. Yeah, that's the Bengals it. looked so bad yesterday. And uh, they're going to need help. Teller Croft has been fine. He scores touch. He, like, he, maybe... Eifert wasn't any good anyway. Maybe they... Just... Eifert is really good. Oh, yeah, Hall of Famer. Ho getting hurt. Yeah. I feel like a skill. There is some sort of skill in staying healthy. Has, how many times has he, he gone? Not, he has Tyler Eifert gone through a season without being hurt? Ever? Well, in college, I mean, no one cares about college. Well, he was the tight end of the year in college. He's just in the great, pros, great. In the tight end. That's really helping his fantasy prospects no. right now. In the pro tight end of the year, Hall of Famer Tyler Eifert. <laughs> in, in the pros, he's not been able to stay healthy, which no. is deeply unfortunate. But is he a product of Andy Dalton just like <laughs> he likes to throw the tight end in the red zone? He throws Tower Croft as a bunch of touchdowns this year. Yeah, I mean, I think that's right. And so maybe Eifert's is no good. I think I cut him. Actually, quite good. Well, but of course you do. Let's say he went to Florida State, not Notre Dame. Would he be any good? That of course does, not. That doesn't color. Oh my no, not just T.J. Jones. T.J. Jones is good. Oh yeah, he's great. Hall of Famer. You just think everyone should be in the Hall of Fame? <laughs> I don't. I think I claimed one person should be in the Hall of Fame who actually should be. Frank Gore. Yes. No, no. Now he's Andrew Kerr's definitely not. That's not a thing. He could be the worst running back in the Hall of Fame. Okay, that's like being the worst gold yeah, medal at the Olympics. Be, yeah, but they you still get to have the gold medal. Like, so what? Yeah, maybe. What if you're in one of those loser sports? There's 
lots of loser sports. Yeah, most of the sports at the Olympics are loser sports. Yeah, well. Archery. Oh, yes, okay. You, know, you look down your nose at 3,000 years of archery. Okay. It's like one of the most historically... Fencing. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with fencing. Fencing. I watch fencing during the <laughs> God. <laughs> I wish I had my epi. I my back. <laughs> Is that what's called an epi? Epi or a foil, yeah. So if someone has like a bee sting, you have to poke <laughs> them with your epi? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Tower Croft, number five. Ben Watson for PPR purposes at number six. Uh, Austin Hooper, your main man, number uh, seven. Could have had a huge day yesterday. He's going to be so good the rest of the year. There's no doubt about it in my mind. I mean, like I said, he probably doesn't have to... He could score negative points every he single game. He's going to be so, so good. Is Julius Thomas going to be good? No. Fat Julius Thomas? No, he can't catch. That's a problem. That is problematic. That's so it was his one target every game yeah. for one yard. He had two catches for two yards, and his longest was three yards. So <laughs> does that tell you what his other catch? All right, let's get to the quarterbacks. Um, it's a tough week with six teams on by. I should probably run through who those teams are, by the way, because I don't think I did that off the top. Uh, Bears, Browns, Vikings, Patriots, Steelers, and Chargers. So That's you're some heavy hitters, Steelers and Patriots and Chargers. I mean, are people playing Ben every week? I don't think so. No, but they're playing Brown every week. They're playing Bell every week. So there's some heavy hitters. Oh, uh, yeah, in terms oh, of a quarterback. A quarterback. Yeah, you're talking losing, quarterback. You lose Rivers and you lose uh, uh, Tom Brady, obviously. Yeah, people are playing Brady every week. Ben and Rivers are meh. Starts. I bet you Rivers is being played up pretty often. I think he's only like 70 I bet you he was 100% played last I mean, week. I mean, yeah. I, and he should have been, and we were wrong about it. And we, uh, that was I'll a be, weird game. I'll be the first to say. It's because of that storm. The storm that didn't hit until 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. It's funny, because if, if people don't didn't see the live show yesterday, we were at Gillette Stadium, and we kept getting questions like, well, with that storm in New England, should I bench all my Patriots? And it was like, we're at the game. There's no storm. Yeah. It's not even raining. Yeah, well, it is. <laughs> I, I like the fake news weather guy. Like, yeah. It's raining in the Superdome. <laughs> Bench all your sugar players. It shows what you know. Uh, but even on, and to break down the win thing again, I hate harping on this every single week, but like, I know that people don't concurrently watch the show, so they, they might miss it. So I do have to bring it up. The only thing that affects this stuff is wind. Wind, or if the rain or snow is like outrageously heavy. But even yesterday in New York, the wind got up to over 20 miles per hour. That's that correct. was more, and they still scored a lot of points in that game. No, that's right. No, that's right. But the wind was like 30 to 35 miles per hour in Tampa Bay and Carolina, and no points were scored. Yeah. Shocker. Wind affects everything. You get over 17 mile per hour winds, that's when it becomes a problem. Rain's not a problem. I, I agree. Um, we're on the same page. So wind is what you need to watch out for. Quarterbacks this week, I got Tyrod Thursday night at the Jets. <sighs> I mean, the Bills will score eight defensive touchdowns. The Jets' defense is not good right now. No, it's not. Well, it's not yet. I mean, they it gave hasn't up, been good all no, year. They gave up 31 to the Dolphins. They gave up 5 million to the Falcons, whatever it was yesterday. Yeah, who, I, think, I think it was 25. Who scored seven against the Patriots. Like, I would expect Buffalo to score 30-plus against the Jets. Here's Why the, not? I mean, the problem with... However, two of those may be on the defensive side. Yeah, so. or the Jets will just, like, get confused and run into their own end zone and take eight safeties. Now that happened yesterday for the Chargers. <laughs> I feel we'll talk to Feinberg on Thursday. Uh, he's not going to be too impressed with Travis Benjamin. Oh, that was awful. So, Ty, listen, Tyrod is a safe 15 points every week. Agreed. That's what you kind of have to go with when it comes to there's not a ton of – if he scores a rushing touchdown, there is a ton of – I can justify McCown this week, too. I have McCown at three. So, I go Tyrod Taylor. I go Jacoby Brissett, uh, Josh McCown, Jared Goff, Drew Stanton because he's playing the 49ers. Sure. And then the list gets a bit dicey with Cutler and Blake Bortles, Hunley, and Mallet. Like, you don't want to be starting those guys. No. I put them on the list because it's a list. You just have to know that they're at the bottom of the list. <laughs> is that how lists work? It is. I mean, I don't do my memento rankings anymore. People really did enjoy those where I'd have, like, 34, 3, 107, well, 7. When I was TAing a class, uh, you had, we had Scantron sheets for the multiple choice. Scantron! You have to use your number two pencil! Yes. And so there was the list, you know, from one to a hundred or whatever. And I was TAing a course and some kid came at the end and turned in a scantron sheet and said, I missed question one, so I just put it at the end and started at two. Is that gonna be a problem? <laughs> I wonder I wonder if he would have done better with that sheet or the sheet he tried to fill out. I thought I don't know if it's gonna make a difference, to be honest with you. Yeah, if, if you think that's something you can do, who knows? <laughs> I mean, you might just want to roll the dice with this one. Unbelievable. So what'd you tell the guy? I said, well, I looked at the instructor, and he looked at me, and we said, well, you have, like, six minutes if you can, like, rewrite it out correctly. Couldn't give him some extra time? No, the time is the time. Well, he had it done. No, he didn't. Cut the kid. He had all the questions No order is to be given. Cut the kid some slack. There was some slack cut. He didn't just take the exam and say, good day. All right. 
Sounds, I don't want to take your class. Yes, you do. I don't, I don't know if I do. It's a laugh riot. Oh, right, yeah, you're up there telling jokes the Hum-dingers entire time? dingers the whole time. Oh, and telling some A.C. Slater jokes? Yeah, well, people get it. They might. Not if, I mean, when you're teaching students and they're all 18 and 19 coming in, I don't know how much they're going to get your 19, yeah. late 80s references. My threes company references fall I mean, there's nothing fall. you enjoy referencing more than shows that came out before you were born. It's true. I didn't reference Hogan's Heroes when we were talking about Chris Hogan, and I really wanted to. Really? I held back. You couldn't have went with Hulk Hogan? I suppose I could At least he's still around. Okay. He's fine. making sex tapes. He's getting all the monies. Shut put down. Gawker out of business. Exactly. Put Gawker out of business. Uh, so, yeah. Tyrod Brissett. Uh, people might kind of scoff at Brissett, but he's kind of a decent, in a not terrible matchup, he's kind of a decent yeah, player. Yeah, two weeks ago it was terrible, but this week he was Well, he played it. Saxonville. Yeah, all right. That's if you're true. playing Saxonville, it's going to be tough to score points if you're a passer. So you're saying bench Andy Dalton? I would uh, have my doubts about Andy Dalton. Bench A.J. Green? I don't, know if I, I don't know if you can bench A.J. Green. Bench Joe Mixon? Well, yeah. You'd probably bench him. Ah, but you can run on the Jets. Bench Mr. Croft? I don't know. It depends on your options. Like if well, you, of course. So, are, are, would you bench A.J. Green? No, but I think I'd bench everybody else. Yeah. I mean, if Mixon's your only other running back, you might have to play him. You can run on the Jags. Yeah. Mixon looked all right yesterday. They found. Yeah, well. But didn't get sent to the bench. Well, that Marvin Lewis is just mailing it in. He doesn't care. <laughs> He's just doing whatever. He knows he can't get fired, so he's nothing going to do. Uh, Goff at the Giants. Iffy, but Goff has been okay. Goff's been really good. Okay. Really, really. Considering where people thought he was going to be like the worst yeah, but quarterback wait, in it, football. It, okay, but that's not how you... Com- he's beating when expectations. You, when, when you land, great. He's beating expectations. That doesn't make him great. Okay, he's been he's pretty been good. He's been okay. Better than okay. He's, he's been pretty good. Okay. All right, fine. He has been. Look okay. At his, if you look at his numbers, he's, he's been okay. He's been fine. He's basically playing. He'd be better if Cooper Cup could catch. You have a touchdown, another win. Uh, Drew Stanton, he might air it out. Maybe it's a real soft matchup. He can run down the sidelines. We know that. That's true. He does have speed. He's not going to blow his knee out celebrating like Martin Gramatica. <laughs> so that's good news. But him at five, like I'd rather play him than Cutler. Agreed. Totally agreed. And then you're getting to like Bortles Hundley territory. I'd mm. rather play. At least you know I haven't seen Drew Stanton play yet this year. He might not be a disaster. He's played in this offense for the last 74 years. Yeah, I mean... When has he not been the backup of the Cardinals? Like when when they, they had Lindley or Rich did, Uncle Skelton? They ha- yeah, because he was hurt then. <laughs> yeah. They had, like, Logan Thomas. Remember him? I, is he, like, a tight end now? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. Uh, so, Flacco's in concussion protocol. Mallet might start. Luck might be done for the season. Hilton might be going, so... Percent might just have to run the ball a whole bunch. We'll yeah. see. Um, Drew Stanton starting for the cards. Matt Moore back to the bench. And Teddy Throzevelt could play in Week 10. No, I don't think it's happening. I don't think he's going to play in Week 10. If the Vikings keep winning, they're not going to make a yeah, change. Yeah, but they're not going to win the Super Bowl with Case Keenum. I don't know. Okay, Wait, but, but by you don't know being act- like, I know, but it hasn't happened not, yet. So I don't know because it's not happening. They're not going to substitute Case Keenum until the Vikings go on a losing stretch. Well, the Lions lost. The Packers have no quarterback. And the Vikings went pretty comfortably uh, in London. Sure, they beat the Browns. Congratulations. Okay, there, but, there's the suit. That maybe okay, that, that, that's probably a tougher matchup than their Super Bowl now matchup is going to be. I, I don't see Case Keenum. Get, I don't see Teddy coming in anytime soon. I just get don't. Teddy ready. Use Teddy. Got to get him on the field. I don't. Sam think, Bradford reeks. Keenum's all right. I think it's likelier than not he doesn't play this year. I, I still believe that. If, if he's not healthy, he won't play. And he had. If he's has healthy, to be they have to play him. They're he's not, their best quarterback. Do you think Mike Zimmer is the type of guy who's going to bench a starter who's got seven or eight I think wins? Mike Zimmer is a guy who's real old, can barely see, and wants to win a Super Bowl. And I, Teddy would get, and a 100% healthy Teddy would give you the chance to win a Super Bowl. I don't know if he's good enough to do it, but it's a better chance Case can I understand do. what you're saying. I just, I'm just saying practically, I don't see it happening. This is the same sort of situation, just like when Alex Smith was running with the Niners, and they were like, screw it, we're playing Kaepernick. We can't win with Alex Smith. We can't win a Super Bowl. Let's try Kaepernick. And he got them there. Okay, but... I and was three yards away from winning the Super Bowl. Sure. Okay. Case Keenum is just not good enough. I understand everything you're saying. I just don't think it'll happen. But, I mean, they did win the Super Bowl last week when they played the tough rounds. Look great in that they game. Won, they, whatever. They won the great, game. Great, great. He's just a Hall of Fame quarterback, Case Keenum. He played fine. Dude, send him to the Hall of Fame. He beat the Browns yeah. in London. He'd probably outfence you. I mean, he might outfence me. I don't know about that. Streaming days of the week. Uh, Chargers did not turn out to be very good, but nope. the Dallas D did. <laughs> yeah, the late TD. Yeah, they were already scoring double digits. Then they got the late TD, added another nine points to it, and boom, looking good. Yeah. These, these, You're on fire. These cheap Ds are coming through. Why would anyone ever pay up for, for defenses? I don't know. Uh, so this week I have Detroit at Green Bay on Monday night. Um, 
presumably the offensive line of the Packers is going to get healthier just because they had the bye week. Sure. Um, not a good spot, though. I mean, I don't love Detroit's defense, although outside of one play against Pittsburgh, they did kind of shut them back. Yeah, it's true. And Nick, Nick or Brett Hundley. I almost said Nick Hundley. I know. Like I made did. the same mistake. He doesn't seem to be very good. Maybe it was, uh, one, it was one game, but, but may, yes. maybe a week to get more integrated into the offense. You still have Jordy. You still have Devontae Adams. Like people are asking if they should drop Devonte Adams. No, or, not yet. Or trade Jordy for nothing. It's like not yet. At least let them have a good. See if they can have a good. You're either stuck with them, or if they have a good game, don't be the person being like, "Well, they had a good game. I want 100 percent value." Just if you do want to get rid of them, if they have a good game, trade them. It's I like, agree. It's like the Amari Cooper thing. And all people wanted to do was drop a Murray Cooper, trade a Murray Cooper for nothing. He has one good game. Untradeable. He's too good. <laughs> Is he too good? You, My number one D this week would be Buffalo. I'm done betting against them. I don't I, care. I have Buffalo at four. I don't care. Until they stop taking balls back for touchdowns, <laughs> I'm on them. And I'm not getting <laughs> off that Riding line. the wave. Yep. Uh, so I like Detroit at Green Bay. I like New Orleans at Tampa Bay. Just their attacking defense. Jameis sucks. Tell me about it. Whew. Not good. I'm surprised you don't have the Dolphins on here. I know they gave it 40 points, but the Raiders offense is terrible. The Raiders. Again last week. I just think at Miami, Miami always plays really good at home. I think Miami's a cheap defense that I would uh, would not mind this week. I don't know. I have to say that. that. Oakland can at least score, like Baltimore can't score points and they scored forty points. Yeah, well, there was Oakland's a, a better offense. But the Dolphins and they're great at pass protect. Coming off a mini buy, the, the only thing that they can do is pass protect. That's it. But after a mini buy it at home, I just and the Raiders on the road again. I just think it's a bad spot for Oakland, and I could see the Dolphins uh, dominating them. Yeah, that's yeah, just what yeah, I think. I, I don't like it. It's super cheap. Uh, so Detroit, I'm with you with the Rams. D- Detroit, the Saints, the Rams, the Bills, the Cardinals against Beathard, who they shouldn't be playing anymore. But or vice versa, you can play the Niners defense against uh, Stanton, if unless you really. I mean, yeah. I know the Niners have given up a bunch of points the last couple of weeks, but before the last two weeks, they did play good defense. So like, they need Hoyer in there. I, Hoyer was their leader. They should be. He was their. He would backdoor cover th- games. No he re- was a real hero. There's no reason. Hall of pro- Famer Brian Hoyer. There's no reason Kyle Shanahan shouldn't be playing Hoyer this week. Well, they may, he might want to go 0-16. Well, I don't think anyone wants to go 0-16. I don't think he cares. What? There's no difference between going 0-16 and 1-16. There's a, s- a stain about to that. To crazy people like you, oh, there really? is. To, to crazy people. To you, insane people. No sorry. Remembers, I'm sorry about the nomenclature. You don't want to be remembered forever as no 0-16 team. That matters to people. Does it? Pro coaches actually like to win football games and actually would prefer not to lose all their football games. I think they would prefer the number one pick right now. They can get it and go one of 15. Maybe not, because the Browns? Then they can have the number two pick, and that's no great problem. It is a problem. You want the number one pick. It's Why? Worth, it's worth more. Who, who, it's worth more. Who's the great number one pick to have? We'll see. You can get Chosen Rosen. Yeah. You don't like him, do you? Because he doesn't play for Notre Dame. He can't be good. The running back for Notre Dame. Yeah, Josh take him Adam. first overall. He's like third Hall of Famer. Hall, well, he's like third in the Heisman voting. And he you told Heisman. me that... If Notre Dame ends up playing Alabama in the first round of the college football playoffs, not a problem. I think Notre Dame would just dominate them in the trenches. I think <laughs> Alabama hasn't played anybody good all Alabama. year. I'm confident with that. <laughs> Steamrolled them. How did that work out last time? Yeah, but that was a... You were very confident going into that game. It's all right. Poor Manti Teo. It's all right. They'll be playing against the, the University of College Football. We'll win the game. Okay. Uh, then Atlanta against Carolina. Carolina uh, could be down Matt Khalil again. Cam takes a bunch of sacks. Sure. I don't really like Atlanta's defense, but again, it's a very thin week when it comes to picking guys up. So many injuries, so many bye weeks in terms of defenses. Guys Certainly. beat up on defense. So yeah. I mean, attack backup quarterbacks. It's usually the best way to go about it. Or once the DVOA gets released on Wednesday, just take a look at the top 10 adjusted sack rate in terms of defensive lines. Compare that to the bottom 10 in adjusted sack rate in offensive lines. And that's usually the best way to go about it. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, who's Washington playing? Seattle? Can't pick up Seattle. I was like, yeah, or whoever's playing Washington with their lack of offensive line, but uh, Seattle, not available. Jacksonville will be the number one defense this week, though. Gross. They're playing Cincinnati at home. I know, but just Jacksonville. Gross. Why do you hate Jacksonville? Because they're, they're no Notre Dame? They're the worst. Do they have no Notre Dame players? I, don't, they don't, I actually don't know if they do. I don't think they do. I, I feel like you just keep, you have hot alerts for every <laughs> Notre Dame player in the league. Google alerts. Or you have DK Live alerts. You download the DK Live app. All right, powerful. Let's hear it. Who you got? So it's basically unchanged from last week because two of the five teams haven't played yet. I'm going to see if I can predict your power poll. I'm just going to go to the standings of the league and read out who has the uh, most wins. All right, all right. So that, that's how this works? Is that how you do it? No, but Philadelphia ought to be number one. Mm-hmm. So they're one. Then at two, I have Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Three, the pa- uh, three, the Patriots. Four, the Chiefs. Five, the Rams. With New Orleans. Sea- uh, sorry, New Orleans. Chicago? No. Chicago's good. Chicago mm-hmm. might be better than the Rams. With New Orleans. Minnesota, and Buffalo on the outside looking in. 
I gotta move the Cowboys up. You had Houston in there last week, but they obviously can no longer be there. Why not? They're under 500 and they're not looking great. Like they're not a playoff team. Who cares if they're under 500? They're not gonna make the playoffs. This, they can make. Why? Because they're not gonna make the playoffs. Tennessee's not making the playoffs. Look at their divisional record. Tennessee. Who cares? They're gonna okay. end up going like 10 and six. They're one and two, uh, one and one in the division, and three and three in conference. They, it's gonna be tough for them to win. If they get ten wins, they're in the playoffs. I don't think they're gonna get to ten wins. They'd have to go, what? Seven and two the rest of the way out to make the playoffs. I don't think that's happening. Let's see who they have the rest of the way. I think Houston's a top five team, and I think Seattle's a top five team. Okay, but they I, just went into Seattle and put up thirty eight points. Let's see, Colts win, Rams win. Lost at Los Angeles. They'll be underdogs. I mean, they, they, they'll the be Ram, underdogs in the lose. The, the Rams are too tough at home after they lost to Washington. There's a loss before, to the Rams, right? a loss at. Go win, ahead. win, 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 win. Nah, probably not at Jacksonville. Or Steel, versus Steelers, Steel. toss up. I see four win. losses on that schedule. Yeah, but you also had the Jets winning 10 games when we went through the schedule, so you, uh, clearly you're kind of shaded on this. They could be 6-2 and two right now. Oh, they should be. They, no, no, I'm sorry. They should be 6-2 and two right now, according to they you. They should be. If they, but they're not because they fucking suck. Because their coach is awful, and the league stole a game from I think us. it's because you Incentives. cheer for them. No. Thus, give them bad vibes. No, the league put us into a tailspin after that call. What about Postmaster Bill? Is he going to the games anymore? Yeah, he'll, he'll be there on Thursday night. Really? His name is... Stop calling him that. His name is Fireman Ed. Is he really a fireman? Sure. That's disrespectful to heroes if he's not. I think he is a firefighter. I don't know. I think he's a postmaster. You know that he isn't. Stop he carries the mail. He has a bad hip. That's why he has to sit so close. Why don't you give me your up. terrible power pole so I can pick it apart? Uh, I'm going to be the one who's right about this. <laughs> uh, Philly number one. Sure. I don't like what I saw in Pittsburgh last night. Okay, but that's the, Detroit's a decent team, and they did beat them. Detroit's okay. They gave them seven red zone possessions. And they didn't let them score once. Sure, but I think it might be Matt Stafford now, twice, has thrown over 400 yards and no touchdowns. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess Pittsburgh stays at number two. So the Pennsylvania teams, Philly and Pittsburgh. I don't, I don't even know if the Patriots' defense is good. They put, it's been four straight weeks that they haven't given up. They've been better. Points, so. so, yeah, Patriots, Seattle, Houston. No Chiefs? Chiefs. Let's assume tonight they, they cover the, the line. Yeah, but I, I think they lose tonight. Okay, fair enough. If they were to win tonight by seven, and a, seven eight points, would you put them over the Texans? I think you have to. Yeah, I would, I, I would put them over the Texans, maybe the Seahawks, but... Okay. Denver might not be good either. No, so if but... They, if they lose to Denver, what's that really saying about them? Fair enough. No, that's true. If they lose at home to Denver, that's a problem. And it's a bad matchup for them, just because... The pressure that Alex Smith is going to face. But it's a good thing because... Kareem Hunt needs to get going. But Simeon's no good, and it's at Arrowhead. So that's a, that's a, that's a positive. Did, didn't we go over this on Thursday, that there is no real specific advantage to playing at Arrowhead? Yeah, but you well, just think there listen, is. The Chiefs, so you're projecting the that Chiefs onto Chiefs win makes my free money teaser hit. That's true. So that's all we're playing for now. Your most confident one of the year, you can get up to only being down five farms. But... It's if you coming. bet a farm every week, you could win two farms, but you're down five farms. It's coming. So you're on your fifth taking your you're on your fifth run of mortgages. <laughs> you better hope there's a lot of acres on that farm. <laughs> They're you green, better, green acres. I don't care what you better be selling something off those acres because the land itself is not worth anything right now. I'm growing ethanol or corn for ethanol. Really? You're a big ethanol guy? That's where the money is. Not in solar? No. It's a fad. It's a fad. That's a fad. The sun's going away. Yeah. So, it's going to be like Mr. Burns. Someone's going to block out the sun. You can't use your that, Tesla anymore. That, and I'm going to sell the Ricketts uh, <laughs> antidote. <laughs> Ricketts. <laughs> Is that a lack of vitamin D? I think so. Yeah, because people in like the Arctic get it. I think so. But not during those days where it's 24-hour sunlight. Like no. In that movie, Insomnia. That's a terrible movie. It's not a terrible movie. It's a good movie. It's from your main man, your boyfriend, Chris Nolan. Hall of Fame I director, like the movie. Chris Nolan. He's allowed to make a bad movie. Do I, do I, really? Really? Did you proclaim that all of his movies are 10 out of 10s no, before you've not, seen them? not every movie. He has a couple of bad ones I don't like. Really? Like? I don't like the very first Batman one he made, Batman Returns. You don't like? Whatever it was called. You don't no. like Batman Begins? No, Batman Begins. No! But you, Liam Neeson is poorly cast in that movie. No one believes him as Ra's al Ghul. Like, <laughs> if you've read the comic books, he does not come across. Have you read the comic books? Yes. No. Of course I no, have. I've never seen you read a comic book. That's okay. Ever. When I was it's young, when I was never happened. When I was younger, my father you're had a comic lying. book stack. You're just lying. People don't think you're real. When yeah. I was younger, my father had a comic book stack, and I used to read them. Okay. I don't agree with you. I think you're lying. Okay, fine. You're just, just trying to make yourself seem like a big man. Oh, I read comics. I, I'm like the people. I read the comics. You're out here talking about archery and fencing. No way you're reading comic books. <laughs> I do. Bringing up Hogan's heroes. I the, Comic books seem like they're too new of a fad for you to get into. They've been around since the 30s, at least. Yeah, it seems like it's a bit too new for you. Mm, right. I'm actually shocked you watched television. Yeah. Too new. Okay. You should listen to football on the radio. I might. 
I Will might, you? I might. Because yeah. it doesn't have the first down marker for you well, to get mad about. That was that was actually really nice about being at the game yesterday. That you couldn't see the first down yeah, marker? Yeah, that was a positive. All right. Remember to leave your power poll in the comment section. Give it a like. Uh, and leave your DraftKings name. You'll be eligible for the giveaway. I want to thank you all for watching. And I do want to thank Tim Undergust. Tim Undergust. That is not my name. For oh, being on the set with me. It's back-to-back days. I'm going to say on the line, but like you're here in person. Don't worry. I'll go back to my Fortress of Solitude on Thursday. Reading your comic books and practicing your fencing. Yeah, that's right. And stabbing yourself with an EpiPen to get yourself all fired up. <laughs> Like in Cursing Pulp Fiction, the Jets. In Pulp Fiction when they get the adrenaline shot. Exactly. But the EpiPen actually does the same thing. Yes. We saw someone stay. Someone, we used to have an allergic to bees guy. Bees. Really? Yeah. I grew up. Oh, okay. With them. So there was always an EpiPen on site. And when, I think in like the eighth grade, someone took the EpiPen and was like threatening people with it because oh. it was funny. And then he accidentally stabbed himself with it. Oh, dear. He had to go to the hospital because he was too fired up. I bet. Anyway, I'm Pat Mayo. You can follow me at the PME on Twitter. Remember to subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Audio Boom, on Podomatic, and Google Play. Whatever device you have, you can download the audio version there. You can subscribe to the DraftKings YouTube page and DK Live to get the full video versions and check out the updated rankings for the waiver wire, all the positions all week, and my DraftKings cheat sheet at DKPlaybook.com. If you want a running list of all of this, where there is no color in between, just a list of the content, Facebook.com slash the P-M-E. I'm Pat Mayo. Good luck in week nine. I'll see you next time.